All right, uh, let's see, somebody else just joined. Let's see if I can figure this out. No, okay, no, okay, let's get started. Only 14 people. That's fine. Um, AI is skip. Okay, community time. Um, are there any topics from the community that people would like to bring up that are not on the agenda? All right, not hearing any. Um, I think technically on our calendars, there may be an SDK call scheduled for today, but um, I think some people are traveling and I know Clemens is on vacation. So um, I'm gonna end up canceling that call unless someone really, really wants it. But I don't think um, there's anything really big to discuss other than uh, Clemens' PR, which I believe Scott had an AI for, but he hasn't had a chance to do it yet. So there's nothing really to discuss there. So I was gonna cancel that meeting in case you guys were thinking about joining. Um, incubator, I'm still waiting for three end users. I know some people on the previous call mentioned that they were going to try to get me some. Um, just a nagging reminder to do that when you guys get a chance. Um, and of course, um, please review the proposal itself to see if you guys think that the, uh, the text in there is, is, says everything appropriately. Um, I think aside from getting the list of three end users, the only thing that may be a little contentious is the fact that they require um, a, a good list of maintainers of the project. And obviously we do maintainership or you know, approving of PRs slightly differently than other code type projects. So if you guys can look over the description about why we do things differently there, if you think that sounds good, or if you think we need to change the description in there, you know, please let me know. Um, let's see, moving forward, let's just jump into PR review. Um, first things first, hopefully this is an easy one. This was technically noticed by Jem. I think it's just an oversight. Since we removed the extensions bag itself, the uh, spec.json schema still mentions it. So I just removed these sections here. I'm not a JSON schema expert, but I, I ran it through a simple online tester and it didn't complain about it. So it seems like it's right. Any, but any questions or comments on this? Okay, any uh, objection to it? Oh yeah, go ahead. I'm not the schema expert either, but like now we can put the extensions on the top level. So does the schema allow for that? I did a quick test of it and it seemed to, at least through the online testing tools I did. I, I gave a, uh, a cloud event JSON with the required attributes and it was perfectly happy with that. I added a new top level attribute and it, didn't and it did not complain. Okay, well, cool. Yeah. I I mean, obviously. As you may, I'm not sure if technically we need to sort of make the statement that additional properties are allowed. Um, I'd have to check that. I'll double check, but I thought we already did say that. Um, but I'll double check. Let me make I, I mean, in the JSON schema itself. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So. Are you allowed to put comments in JSON schema? No, there's, um, there's a construct where you can allow additional properties. Uh, I, I'll... I, I, I'm fine with the change, although obviously I've, it, it, uh, it must have happened before my, my time on this project. But I'll, I'll, I'll check with the, the correct, yeah, if there's any additional syntax. But okay, yeah. Fine. yeah. Okay, yeah. Because we can always open another PR to add that additional syntax if needed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, any objections to approving that one? Okay, cool. Now, Jim, I know you said you needed to go. Um, so I wanted to bring up this issue first, because um, I think you had some strong opinions on this one. I think you even added a comment recently. Um, did you want to, to talk to your concerns first before you have to vanish? Yeah, sure. Okay. So this is all related to the, you know, the issue Evan had raised with um, if we have maps of maps then you can go down a rabbit hole trying to um, encode or decode those um, and i think his proposal was to say let's do away with the map construct um, so what i started to um, really sort of have thoughts about was how that applies to extensions that actually have multiple attributes or properties associated with them so in that example we're looking at there um, this is a structured event um, that, you know, assuming we've taken on Doug's recent um, PR change, um, the extensions are modeled at the top level. Yeah, so I have a bag of extensions for the sequence and a bag of extensions for a proprietary one called BBS that 
that no one has any knowledge of it except the, the people that deal with that. So now comes the test. Yeah, okay, I want to take that structured mode, uh, structured content, and re encode it into binary. Now, um, I've left fill in the blanks there because you know I would propose doing it one way, and I think Evans would would change that. Um, the interesting point is whatever you do there, how do you then go on to step three and say, okay, given that binary representation, how do I recreate the structured one? Yeah, without any knowledge, any advanced knowledge of of any of those extensions. Um, so my position at the moment is that if we said that an extension can be a bag of primitive types, um, maybe just strings even, um, there's a way using our existing transport encoding mechanisms that we can encode the, um, the extensions into those headers in such a way that we could decode it back into that structured um, event format. Um, without some sort of way to do that, I'm not sure how you can do it. If you, so, if you simply just flatten them. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the, the current spec says that this sequence block right here would get serialized as HTTP headers in the format of CE-sequence-sequence -sequence colon 99 Yes. CE dash sequence dash sequence type colon integer. Yes. And that then that's and then you should be able to do the exact opposite to for your for your step three, right? Yes, you should. But if we do I, I thought the whole point of this was trying to do away with um, even doing away with the, the construct of sequence or BBS being a collection of attributes. Right. So, so basically these two would become the top level things and these two would become top level things. Right. Um, and so now you've lost any sort of encapsulation for those extensions. And also, and I think though this was what I was trying to get at in my slacking on the phone, was that the SDKs, as they're written today, honor this sort of notion of an extension that has a set of attributes and that there can be multiple extensions within a cloud event so if you if you flatten everything up to the top you lose you you sort of lose that construct altogether i'm not sure how you can recreate that at an sdk level yeah how you could represent oh here are all the attributes associated with the sequence extension if you didn't have pre-knowledge of what that sequence extension looked like. So I want to make sure I understand what your concern is, because it sounds like it could be one of two things. Um, at, at, a, at a top level, it sounds like you agree that you can technically serialize things back and forth and go between the binary and, and structured it, it, at, with things at a top level. It, it's you're more concerned with this, the, the semantic grouping of things. Do I have that right? Well, I mean, I with the flattening, um, assuming we did the flattening, yeah? Um, well, let's see, this is where it gets challenging. In Evan's proposal, my structured event wouldn't look like that at all, yeah? So I have no natural grouping of extension attributes. Correct. If, if, you, if, you, if we adopted Evan's proposal, this sequence would go away, these would remain as top level things. The BBS would go away. These would be top level things, but the, I, sus I suspect the recommendation would be, well, these aren't really descriptive enough. You may want to put the word BBS in front of both of these as they, as they become top level things, right? That's true. And you de well, that, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. You end up having to namespace them anyway to make, yes. them, put, to make them descriptive. So if you're yep. going to do that, why not just stick with that structure? Right, and that, and but then, <clears throat> but I think that gets to what I was trying to figure out: is are you trying to make it so that SDKs can take that top level uh, flattening that you're talking about and 
in essence, magically recreate a structure like, like here, where it's BBS with sub-properties? Well, yeah. Um, okay. because would, and this is where I, um, when I joined and I looked at the spec.json file and, and sort of got my head around what was going on, that's exactly what I thought was happening, yeah? Now, maybe I was misled by the fact that the spec.json file was, had not been updated since you know, a previous decision had been made. Um, but I'd always naturally assumed that they were grouped. Yeah? And when I looked at the SDKs, the SDK writers appeared to have gone down the same road. Yeah? They were offering the ability to add an extension and an extension, and I think even in the C-sharp use case, um, I'm not a C-sharp expert by any stretch, that seemed to imply to me that the SDK writer had assumed there was a set of extension groupings, yeah? And that each extension had a set of attributes. Okay, so I think even, <clears throat> let's back up. I think I wanna make sure we're on the same page here. Uh, let's go back to this one. Do, 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 do. So even with the old schema, this was just a single bag, right at the top level. Well, it's an object. Um, yeah, but yeah. It, so it's a yeah, but it, it's an object map. Yeah. So the um, the uh, what I read into that was that I would have a top level entry of an extension, extensions, and mm -hmm. then inside that another object which you know would be you know property type BBS, which in itself would be an object. Yeah, this is the map of maps problem. Yeah. Well, yeah, but so I believe what this actually says here, though, is there was a top level property called extensions. Yes. It basically, as, as we called in the past, a bag. And inside of that bag could basically be anything. It could be a list of name value pairs or it could be a list of name colon objects, right? You, as, as you said, you could have bags inside bags, right? But right. it also could just be a flat list of top level things, right? It could but I right. say this is the disconnect for me between the way that reads and the way that some of the SDKs are presenting. Yeah, um, it, there's something adrift somewhere. Um, and maybe it's just in my mind, um, but I'd always imagined, especially the way we even define extensions. Yeah, we say, here's, here's an extension. And in some cases I've seen, I thought I'd seen extension writers say, and this is the in-memory name given to this extension. Yeah. Yeah, I think that word is somewhere in one of the extensions. But yeah. you seem to be claiming that um, basically all extensions are themselves bags with multiple properties underneath. And I don't believe that's true. Extensions as of today can be bags, but they can also be just single name value pairs. Right. I, but I think right. that would still... What? Well, even if you uh... right, because because what you're asking for when I was asking about you know that magic happens right, where somebody s says if they see BBS context and then BBS correlation, if you're asking the SDK writer to convert that from a list of top level things into a bag called BBS and re removing the prefix from those two things, I would be blown away if any SDK actually does that because that seems like a little bit too much magic and, and reading but people's minds. But that's what the transport binding spec says. Yeah, the transport binding spec tells me how to take those. Uh, I always interpreted the transport binding spec would, would understand how to do that. But it, it only, but it does that because of the dash that we put in there. Exactly. Yeah, right. so, so we're now we're saying let's take the dash out, whereas all I'm saying is, you know, let's leave it in but just limit extensions to one level, yeah? So you don't have a map of a map of a map. Okay. And fact, just, but just to make sure that you're at the... You could still have a top level um, single, you know, an extension with a single primitive. Doesn't always have to be a bag, but yeah. I, I don't know how else to explain. I, I think I may have mis read or read too much into what I what I'd sort of gleaned from other aspects of the specs and the way SDKs were evolving. 
Yeah, and, and to, be, to be clear, I'm not necessarily trying to advocate a position one way or the other. I'm just trying to make sure that we're all on the same page because I still think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding in the sense that my understanding of Evan's proposal is that if everything gets flattened to the top level, SDK writers would not try to do that mapping that you're talking about. They would not try to do that correlation. If everything is the top level, everything is the top level to the end user when they look at the extensions. Yeah, I, I think the other thing for me is from a, you know, purely with a JSON hat on, you'd end up with really ugly documents at that point. Yeah, because you just end up with a, a cloud event with, you know, just a random assortment of, um, of header items. Um, but, you know, that's more of a stylistic thing for me. Yeah, and, and to be honest, that's what I always thought this came down to, right? Because you can do it as a flat list or you can do things as, as bags. It's just a question of, from, from a human readable perspective, which one's easier to deal with? Because I think machines could deal with either one, right? Right. Ah, so now you've touched on an interesting one. Um, yeah. Is it a machine issue or a human readability issue? Because really the machine issue should trump the human readability issue, shouldn't it? Well, yeah, but I don't, I don't think there's a machine issue, though, to be honest. Because I can, I can put BBS context, BBS correlation as top-level things, and if I know what property to look for, whether I have to look in BBS dot context versus BBS context, it you know, doesn't matter to me as, as a machine. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I, I, maybe part of me is just sort of railing on this a bit because what we're sort of ending up with is – you know, a payload and a set of headers, you know, which maybe is the intention. Yeah. Um, the, the same issue you have with, well, not issue, the same way that HTTP is just, you know, a payload and a set of headers. And, and I'd sort of imagined that the way you guys had, had sort of come at this was just a bit more structured than that. That was all, you know, to allow that sort of, um, I'm automatically namespacing my extensions by by putting it in a BBS you know, placeholder. Yeah, in this instance. Yeah. So I know we've dominated the conversation. Um, I'd like to hear from other people on the call. What have you guys been thinking about relative to this issue? Um, I think technically, from a straight coding perspective, we could make either one technically work. I think a lot of it does come down to uh, human readability or wrapping your around, around, head around things, you know, because obviously having a grouping like this is much easier for people to wrap their head around because they feel like there's a security blanket of some sort of uniqueness by putting this here. But technically, you can always prefix these things if they're top-level things, right? So it becomes more of a human-readable thing in my mind. But that, I don't want to necessarily discount that, though, either, because sometimes that does matter in terms of usability and, and people's perception of usability of the spec. So what, are there, what have other people been thinking about this issue? Oh, hi, this is Vladimir. Um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Vladimir, go ahead, please. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm concerned um, if we flatten this, and, and I can see something like sequence dash sequence. Uh, if I recall correctly, the limit for the keys is 20. So that basically means you have 10 characters for one and 10 characters for two for the second. Um, in, in my experience, we often see there are some applications and their identifiers will be longer. Uh, so I'm afraid we'll get into a situation where we start kind of shortening and condensing, uh, condensing um, skipping vowels and, and stuff like that. So we'll end up with kind of uh, less usable um, uh, code for the developers. Just to point out, though, even if we keep bags, when they get serialized as HTTP headers, we concatenate them together. So I think that same limit still applies, doesn't it? Was the limit for the length, not the number of headers, though? Well, I thought, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was talking about the length of the header name was the, was the yeah. issue. I think the guidance, it's not a strict limit, but a guidance we define is that a key should be 20. It's not a hard limit, though. Mm -hmm. That's what I recall. I'm not 100% sure. But I think yeah. the total header length isn't really uh, limited from a spec perspective. Well, I guess what that means then is if we do adopt this proposal, we would need to possibly change the, that recommendation of 20 and maybe perhaps make it longer. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, who else had their hand up? I know someone else did. 
Vlad, were you, were you going to say something? I can't remember. Yes, I was. I was confused why the sequence dash sequence thing and sequence dash sequence type uh, is something that's not going to work. That Because that is both, that's easily understandable by machines. And I definitely, as an SDK user, I definitely want to be able to do sequence dot sequence. So I don't understand why that is dismissed or what's the issue with that. Could you please expand on that a bit? What do you mean by it was dismissed as, an, as a thing? Not dismissed. You said there's a problem with that and that sequence might get dropped, the first one. Why was that? So in doing sequence dash sequence uh, value 99, well, uh, uh, comma 99, Mm -hmm. You said the first sequence would be dropped under some proposal. Oh, yeah, under this PR, Evan is suggesting that we don't allow maps at all. So that if someone wanted to represent this uh, after this PR is merged, they would either take these as, as properties as, as they currently exist and make them top level things. Or in the case down here, if these names are too generic, they would prefix them with BBS. That's all I was saying. Okay, so we're forcing namespacing to the actual property name. Got it. Basically, yes. Yes, that's a good way to phrase it. Oh, I disagree with him or her. <laughs> Hi, this is, this, this is Tim. Yes, hey, Tim. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Hi, I, I, I'm, I'm negative on the proposal. I think that namespacing, and then you're going to get something that's complicated, whether you put it in JSON or protobufs or whatever, just, you know, if somebody wants to have a structured value for an extension, I'm fine with that. And the, the problem it presents is not that big and the solutions I think are uglier. Over. So are you, so do you, Chris, do you disagree with the original assertion that the, the current serialization we have of, of maps inside maps inside maps is, do you, you disagree that that's actually a problem and that we, we deal with it just fine with the, with the serialization rules we have. So you're asking me? Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably you're okay. You're asking Tim, right? Yeah, Tim, I just want to make sure, yeah. Because, because we, yeah. So, so Tim, you, um, okay, no, never mind. And anybody else want to speak up? This is Colin. Um, I agree. I, I think it's fine as is. Okay. Okay. Cause, cause to be honest, I, I've, I have wondered that myself. Um, I've wondered whether yes, from a pure technical perspective, someone could produce maps three level deep and then it's going to maybe cause some sort of problems, but just because the spec allows it doesn't mean it's necessarily smart for people to do it and they'll quickly learn to not to do stupid things. Um, so maybe, maybe that maybe that's the point um, that we try and say something along the lines of you know, you shouldn't have nesting of more than you know n levels you know whatever n is you know if it's one or two or whatever and that you guarantee that everything will work up to that level and beyond that you know your your um, rate of success is invariant. I'd I'd almost rather tweak it slightly or if we were to head that direction and rather than try to give a limit, just warn in the primer what some of the, what some of the things are to watch out for if you do do nested maps rather than try to come up with a limit because any number we come up with is arbitrary anyway, right? Sure. But I mean, again, we're going to have to, you know, um, I don't have Scots on the line, but it, we, there's got to be some guidance as to what those SDK writers are going to have to expect to deal with. Yeah. And I think that's where Evan was coming from. Yeah. As, as he started to write code around these things, he was coming up against this, you know, how far do I go statement? Yeah. Um, Jim, would you be willing to take an action item to possibly write some text to the primer to, as a sort of an alternative to this PR? That's, that gives the guidance we're talking about here, but that basically doesn't change the spec itself. Jim? So, who are you addressing oh, that 
I, I, was, I was saying Jim, but it made it sound like Tim. <laughs> I was no, talking, right. Yeah, I was on mute. I was talking on mute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can do that. And then we can have a sort of pistols at dawn scenario to, I guess, decide which PR wins. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that image. That's good. Yeah. Um, Vlad, your hand is up. Yeah. So this whole PR started from the transports, not easily being able to encode the uh, nested objects. So assuming we leave it as it is without merging this, how are the transport going to handle that? Are we fine with that trade-off? And I think that's the, I think that's the point. I think that if I understand it correctly, I think the binding rules we have today actually will work. It's just because it's sort of recursive, um, there were concerns that you could end up with maps with maps of maps of maps of maps, 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 and you would really go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, I think I'm trying to remember everything because it's been a while since I've actually looked through like 460 and 456. But I think I don't think there was anything technically wrong with the spec. I think it was just as Evan said, there, there. It's just things get problematic and ugly. Is I think what it comes down to, and so he was suggesting to keep life easy by trying to limit things. I think that's what we're going on here. Yeah, I, I'm also I not sure if this, sorry, go on. I remember Clement saying something about AMQP not being able to easily encode this and having to do some really dirty hack, but I, my memory is fuzzy on that, so. So you would think if that was, you would think Clevens would have mentioned that when he was writing up the AMQB spec in around this section. But. So I, 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 I came up with the, so I remember Clement saying that I just checked the AMQP um, transport binding says nothing about maps. It's, and Clemens was saying that when he actually started implementing it, that's when he hit the wall because AMQP has no maps. There's no way to encode them really. Yeah, and I think that's where you would follow a similar scenario to the HTTP binding, yeah, where you would, you sort of, fake the map through the property names. And, and, and I must admit, I thought that was probably what would be going on. The, the other one, Doug, I'm not sure if this is also related to another issue around the fact of, you know, if you have ennies or maps of ennies, then, you know, how do you transport like ints or timestamps when you know, your transport binding doesn't even have that construct. So AMQP has very rich primitive types. Yeah, but obviously HTTP only has strings. So do you, do you also try and restrict your um, attributes or context properties to be strings and not these sort of complex types? And I don't sure if we're conflating all of those issues into this one PR. But didn't that recent PR that we merged that I think Clemens wrote up where he said everything has to have some sort of string serialization to it, that, doesn't that address that concern? It may well yes, do. That, yes. that problem was addressed by Clemens with the um, everything has a string encoding and the, it's the responsibility of the client receiving the message to reconstruct the types if the transport didn't support the actual types and they are strings. So the client should know what type your attributes are because, well, it should know they are either cloud events attributes or extension attributes. If it doesn't understand them, it'll leave them as strings. And when someone does understand them, they can decode the string. It's yeah, okay. It's not, um, not I do have to, anymore. I have to drop Doug. I'm sorry about that. No, that's fine. Just, just you'll, you'll take the action item to write up that guidance, though, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so. Okay, so Jim is going to write up um, some proposed text to basically keep the spec as is, but then provide guidance that says, don't do silly things. Um, is that where most people's heads are at on this issue, on the, you know, for everybody on the call? Or does someone want to speak up to know there really is an issue here that we need to address? Sorry, did, did someone actually give a good reason to keep the maps, though? Because the last time I was here and we spoke about this, it was just like nobody could come up with a good reason to keep them. It ju it's just a headache. Well, I think what we were hearing from Jem as well as Tim was they do see value in keeping them. Okay. At least that's what I'm hearing. Uh, that, that, that's, that's the overall question, right? Go ahead, Christoph. Yeah. 
I do agree that for namespacing, whether you have a uh, defined extension that we have defined, like the sequence type, or something that you as a company define, it's valuable to have that namespacing to group your multiple attributes together. Yeah, sure. The uh, counter to that last time was that you can also do namespacing without maps just in the name. But I guess it's harder now that we don't have anything else but lowercase letters. There's no separators or anything. And I think somebody did mention that if we do get rid of maps, we could loosen up those restrictions if we really wanted to. But I think it still comes down to we're asking the user to do namespacing through prefixes, right? Yes, because that that's <laughs> that's because um, in in many transports that's what will actually happen anyway. So right. it it it's not actually a big change. There are very few transports that actually support maps in headers. So that well, yeah, it's kind of whatever. Someone else can argue with Clemens when he's done. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Um, okay, Tim, were you going to say something? I thought I saw you come off mute for a sec there. No, just listening. Thanks. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Um, anybody else want to speak one way or the other on this one? Okay, because I have a feeling that this may just come down to a very binary choice. You know, maps or no maps, basically. And then once that decision is made, we just need to decide what the ramifications are. For example, you know, if we decide to kill maps, then we can loosen the restriction about character sets and stuff like that. Um, and if we if we keep maps, then we just need guidance for things to for people to watch out for. So we'll we'll see what <clears throat> what Jim comes up with, and we'll I guess come down to a vote or something at some point, which would be unfortunate. Uh, this is this is Colin. Do we have some actual use cases of maps and maps? I, I mean, know. I can understand the use case of maps where, you know, you want to avoid a prefix, right? Yeah. But, you know, in serialization, that's probably what's going to happen anyhow. But are there any concrete use cases? I mean, is this something that needs to be tackled today? Yeah, I think that's where Jim was actually suggesting that maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, for right now, we start off with saying, sure, you can use a map, but only one level. Because we can always extend it later if we've really had a need to. Honestly, I don't know. I'd have to go back and ping Evan. Unfortunately, he's not on the call to find out whether this was just a, you know, experimentation and what the spec allows versus re reality. Hi, this is Tim. Um, yep. I, you know, I, I can. I'm starting. To, I'm starting to appreciate the other side of this one and, and see why you might want to restrict to these things to primitive values. You know, singular values, not plural. Um, what I would really be against is trying to invent a namespacing syntax. I think that would be a really, really bad idea. So I want to make sure what you, I understood what you said there, because I don't think anybody was advocating a, uh, I don't think anybody was advocating for the spec to define a namespacing syntax. I think that'd be up to the client to decide that oh. if they wanted one at all. Um, it was just, it would be up to okay, them. To okay, decide. fine. I, sorry. Yeah, okay. I obviously heard people talking about some namespacing conventions. Please, no. Yeah, fine. no, no, no. We, no, no it, 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 if, if namespacing was used through prefixes, it would be user-defined way of doing it. Um, but the other point, to what I, was, I want to understand your first point though, was when you said you're, you're starting to look at things from the other side, do you mean that you're starting to think that maybe maps are a bad idea or that you want to maybe say only one level of maps? Um, I, I guess I would go with either zero or as many as you want with caution. And I can see the case for both of those. Put me, put me down as undecided. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because it doesn't seem like you went back and forth on that one. Okay, cool. Uh, in that case, let me, Evan just joined the call. So let me pick on Evan for a sec. Evan, are you actually there? Yes. Excellent. So there was a couple of questions that came up. We were, we're talking about your PR. Yeah. You joined just in time. A um, couple of questions. I'm trying to remember what they all were. I think one of the big one was, <sighs> Obviously, one of the concerns was maps of maps or, you know, a whole bunch of nested maps. Was that something that came up because of a real end user use case that you ran into problems with? Or was it just trying to push the limit to the spec? Um, are you saying, were the user actually trying to make maps of maps? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, I, 
I think instead I'd found that some of the usage of the SDK was awkward because it needed to support this. So it was affecting users who didn't want to use maps of maps. Um, but it made the encoding and the, um, the SDK API more challenging. Interesting. Okay. And so it had an impact on people who weren't using the feature. Oh, and by the way, I can find no evidence of anyone until now wanting to use the feature and looking at AMQP and HTTP and Google PubSub and MQTT, none of them support these maps in a header natively. And I'm not sure about any routing tools that would be able to process them natively either. Unless you do something like we do in the HTTP bindings where we use hyphens to separate them and it doesn't work very well. Okay. Anybody want to jump in on that conversation? Why does it not work very well with hyphens as separators? Um, be, well, so one of the fun cases is that um, you, um, let's see, what was it? Oh, yes. Um, maps can contain any string key, including empty string. So you end up with a header with a hyphen at the end, which I'm not sure is, is actually allowed. <sighs> okay. But that, but that, but then let's uh, fix. JSON, JSON the, also allows that. Well, let's so, fix just then the empty string thing. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, yeah, that sounds better. better. But um, there's a lot of complexity in the translation and it makes the names of our headers worse, of our regular attributes worse, because we can't use hyphen as a separator because we're using it um, as a delimiter between map and the key in the map on the HTTP binding. Okay, um, so it makes it Remember how we, how we flattened the set of allowed characters in the attributes, and now there's no, it's only letters and numbers, and there's nothing like a hyphen or an underscore. Um, if we took maps out, I think we could put a hyphen or an underscore back in some of our names if we wanted spec version, for example, to be hyphenated. So I think, uh, Christoph, I can't remember I, who's first, but Christoph, on my list, you're first. Yeah, I think that was in the original discussion that was had we discussed multiple things, including having a separator. But for most the most interoperability, it was decided that we only have uh, the letters, no separators at all, because any transport could theoretically use that for something. So including the hyphen. And then because the hyphen is free, the uh, HP headers can use it. But the HP headers could also use something else if they wanted to. Um, so if you introduce the hyphens for it, we could also use the underscore or whatever in the header. What, what uh, was HTTP it doesn't headers? allow underscores, but... Um, or anything else, really, yeah. But you could imagine having a single delimiter character that if it was underscores in JSON, um, because a hyphen in JSON means you have to quote your keys, which is kind of sucky and annoying. Um, otherwise, you're subtracting two attributes. Um, but you could translate between underscores and hyphens. I've, yeah, but I think the point was to be sort of forward compatible with anything. The idea was also with potential programming languages in which you have the SDK. The idea was if we have nothing in terms of separator, we have also no problem. We can map that to any programming language SDK. We can map it to any transport binding. That was the original idea to not provide something like the hyphen in there. And then the hyphen became available in the uh, for the HTTP header. So, to, to Pini, I think your hands up next. Yeah. So I just wanted to point out um, a fun thing where we don't we don't want to uh, we don't want to prescribe um, prefixing conventions or namespacing conventions, but we actually do now because we um, create the HTTP headers with maps and we would have to create the MQP headers and Kafka headers and everything with maps 
encoded as strings with hyphens in the middle, and that's a namespacing convention. True, to some extent. You you would like actually on the wire, you your messages would have a prescribed namespacing convention because of how the spec works. You mean when we're yeah, when we when you're when you're mapping, you know, like this yeah. into a header, yes. We're 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 defining a prefix mapping scheme, yes, in a sense. I agree. Yeah. Kind of. Okay, Vlad, your hands up. Yeah, I'm giving a bit of rope here. I'm trying to summarize this to make sure I fully understand it. <laughs> so we have, uh, we have to choose between two things. One of the things is uh, forcing the user to do namespacing themselves. How they do it doesn't matter. We're forcing the user to do that themselves because it might be hard or impossible for the SDKs and transport to do it. Now, is it hard or is it impossible to do it in the SDKs? Because if it's just, um, com I don't want to say, uh, like, do we want to make the user experience worse instead of the encoding code? Like, if it's impossible or very, very hard to do in encoding and transport, okay, offload it to the user, they're going to do namespacing. But if it's just, annoying to do it in, main, in the transport and SDKs, do we want to make the end user experience worse? Did I understand this correctly? Yeah, Evan, you want to talk to that one? Um, yes, yeah, so my comment was actually that having to deal with the map case as a user made the SDK worse. Um, because you suddenly had wildly variable types that were coming out of the SDK when you got an attribute. And so um, you had to treat them, you know, sometimes they were structured objects and sometimes they were simple strings and sometimes um, they were URLs or something like that, which we mostly treat as simple strings anyway. Um, but my experience was that there were a couple places in the SDK where like the typing became more difficult because you had to be able to return a map as well as a simple object. Just I want to poke on that a little just to make sure I understand it. Today you may get the property that's say integer versus a string. Mm -hmm. uh, the SDKs in general have to be able to support returning in essence non-strings, right? So in, in general they have to be able to support more than one data type being returned for, a, for an extension, right? Um, there's an interesting case of known and unknown extensions. For unknown extensions, um, we don't have a strong enough type system to be able to tell that this thing that was sent over the wire is actually a number in, in many cases. Right. The PR we just merged keeps it as a string, basically. Yeah. Um, so like spec version. Uh, as an example, if, if that were an extension rather than in, than in the core, looking at what's on the screen right now where it says 0 0.5, is that a floating point number? Is it a string? Like right now in that particular case, it's quoted, but if it were an HTTP header, it right. would be non-quoted and we don't know. Right, we, right. if it's unknown, we'd have to treat it as a string. I agree. Right. Yes. It is a string. Um, but with the curly brace stuff that suddenly like uh not for the curly brace stuff but from http you can tell that it's a map and so it's there's not a fallback to it's a string or a map if you don't know what it is hmm. um, in the sdk and string or a map is a kind of funny variant type to have in your programming that's interesting because you're right, we do treat, un at that point, we would treat unknown extensions that have any maps differently than unknown extensions that are any other type. Yeah. yeah. Like that does that, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Good on that, just be resumed to, hey, any extensions that have a single attribute in a map get flattened? Wait, how does that help? it solves the map or string question by saying, if it's a map, it's one thing, it's always a string, otherwise it's a map. 
Uh, sorry, the return value when you're fishing out an extension needs to be string or map. True, 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 yeah, sorry. In your code. And that's um, an annoying thing to work with. Okay, so we now can resume the fact that the user either has to namespace their extension themselves or uh, treat reading events differently for different types of extensions. But, uh, well, hmm. I was actually wondering about something different. Evan, would it, what would happen if we said unknown extensions, regardless of the type, including map, are strings? Um, in that case, I think you would probably solve a lot of these cases, but it seems like it would be, uh, we'd have to change the HTTP encoding, which is not bad. I think that would probably be a positive change in any case. Um, but it's not clear, would we say that the maps are serialized as like the string representation of a JSON object? Maybe. Um, it, that either means that every intermediate thing that wants to be able to, you know, handle or filter or something on an extension needs to be able to crack open that map, or they're just going to treat them as plain strings. Mm -hmm. At which point we could just say it's a map from string to string. Oh, and by the way, some of these strings happen to be able to be popped open into JSON maps if the, if the endpoints know about it. Yeah, but that's, what I was, nobody, that's kind of what I was thinking. Nobody in between needs to know that it's a map. Exactly. That's well, what I was wondering. Unless they want to do routing or filtering or something. And then um, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say yeah. this plainly, um, matching against JSON encoded maps is really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I agree. And, and I that's think that's one of the reasons. Doing. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons people wanted to drop this. But, that, but then I'm kind of wondering, it, so it seems to me in, all, in a lot of these discussions is, is so the difference between the spec being very flexible versus trying to stop people from doing things that are really hard or really stupid. And if they want to do filtering based upon a map, it, it's, it, their life is going to be hell no matter what they do. Um, it's, it, especially when things get serialized, they should be headers. So it seems like to me that they'd very quickly stop doing that. And they would, they would not use maps in that point. They'd make them top level properties no matter what. And I'm kind of wondering whether this is more a question of maybe change what we're doing a little bit here, like stop treating maps differently for extensions and maybe say they're strings. Um, but maybe most of this is really just around providing guidance that says, look, you can do lots of stupid things with respect because it's flexible, but you really shouldn't do this, this, and this if you, if you want to make sure you're interoperable or making life easy for people. I don't know. What do you think, Evan? Uh, I'm in favor of making it a map of string to simple type, um, which is basically what the PR does. Um, and then, you know, have people use prefixes and maybe introduce a non alpha character that would be met that, you know, every transport has to say how you map underscore to the right thing in that transport. Well, I want to make sure I understand what you said there. I thought your PR removed maps entirely. Uh, well, the top level object is a map, but yes. Um, okay. It removes maps except for the data part, which we're dealing with separately in 470 or 471 or um, jumping off a bridge or something. Okay. I think the problem we're running into is people's, people seem to be going back and forth. There are times that I think, yes, fine, screw it, maps are too hard, let's get rid of them. But then when you start looking at things from an end user perspective, we'll start thinking about, really, I'm gonna have to figure out my own little prefix scheme if I wanna do this context and correlation thing. I can't do a very simple little grouping mechanism like this BBS thing. And I mean, then, I, would, I would love to be able to say BBS underscore CTX and BBS underscore correlation. As, as, even, as indiv individual attribute names that you could filter on individually yeah, I, th I think a lot, th but then that, that puts the burden on the client to, to figure out their own prefixing scheme, right? But they still have that burden here, don't they? 
If someone else picks BBS because it's not sufficiently unique, you could still collide. No, I'm not talking about collisions. I think the, I, I'm, I'm trying to echo what I'm hearing from other people is, is this, this grouping mechanism mm -hmm. is very natural for people to wrap their heads around. To say, oh, you want a grouping mechanism? Prefix your things with, with some BBS underscore thing. Technically, it can work. What I'm hearing from people is it's a user, it's a, it's a non very, it's a not a very user friendly way of doing it is what I'm hearing. And I think that's the concern a lot of people have is we're taking something that everybody seems to wrap their heads around very nicely, which is, hey, and Jason, you can do this simple little, at least one level grouping thing. And that, that's really convenient for me. But in cloud events, suddenly you lose that ability. And I think we're hearing some people getting a little nervous about that. I'd, I'd like to let whoever has their hand up um, talk first. Oh, yeah, sorry, go, go ahead, Spini. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to add one point. Uh, you were talking about the JSON encoded objects. That's actually what we do now. The string encoding for objects is a JSON object. Um, so it's for all transport bindings that don't specifically state that they do the hyphens or something like the HTTP one. Um, it, so for example, for the MQB, MQP transport binding, the correct way would be to JSON encode it now. And is that something that you could actually use in one of the intermediaries without a lot no, of work? Absolutely not. Vlad? Okay. Uh, let's go to Vlad first. Vlad? Yeah, uh, so somebody mentioned uh, treating uh, unknown extensions as a string which might be a map and then somebody else pointed out that that would make routing on that and filtering on that very, very hard because that's uh, very hard to do in JSON and very computationally intensive. And that was a very, very good point. And as a user, I would much rather be able to filter on the stuff I'm putting in uh, a map than uh, not be forced to do, than being forced to do uh, prefixes. So whatever we choose, I. Uh, we need to be able to have easy, um, an easy way for transports and intermediaries and middleware to be able to do filtering on whatever level depth of uh, a map that's an of a, of a whatever level depth is extension. Because if I put something a, as an extension, I definitely want that to be able to fil to be filtered on. Right. I, I think, as Evan said in the chat, I, I think that's probably why we did the HTTP header encoding the way we did, where we don't put the entire map as one gigantic thing. We try to split it out individual properties. Okay. With that dash, you know, prefixy thingy. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that would need to be, if we do keep maps, I am, at least I am strongly of the opinion that um, every single transport that doesn't natively support maps and headers would need to do that because otherwise filtering is impossible. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, we're almost out of time. I'm not sure we're necessarily circling around to an answer here or consensus. Um, Evan, can I ask a favor of you? Okay. Um, I, would it be possible for you to, to write up sort of the, the pros and cons in a very, very concise list, not, not rambling paragraphs, just very, very short little list of here's the, the good things and bad things about the way things are today. And here's the good and bad things about things, the way life will be after your PR. I will, I will do my best. Okay, I appreciate that. I know it's, it's hard. I'm it's sure there's to probably be some cons I will miss because, um, or, or some, some cons of the proposal I'll miss because uh, I'm obviously in favor because I bothered to write it up. Yeah, I, I, yeah, be as unbiased as you can, but I understand it, it is your baby. That's fine. <laughs> Understood. But I think, I think we need something that's simple for people to sort of look at it and compare it without getting lost in pages and pages of, of, of text. So, okay. So maybe that'll help people make a decision one way or the other. Um, okay, and just so you know, before you joined, Jem was going to write up some text um, about guidance if we kept things the way they are today. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see what he comes up with. So have people have people looked at all at the Amazon um, event bridge stuff that came out recently. Yes, I did. I did too, and I really want to see cloud event support. <laughs> uh, so one of the interesting things that they include there is the ability to extract some of the JSON data. 
And that seems like something we should have a position on in cloud events. Do you have a point right, to this that? Is, this is Tim here. For, for, for... Hi, this is Go Tim ahead, from Tim. AWS. What do you mean by extract JSON data? Uh, I seem to recall that in the rule, you can say you can select specific parts of the um, message to be sent to the target. Correct. We have a filtering technique that allows you to match as deeply into the nested uh, JSON structures as you want, but I don't see well, how that relates to this. Well, if you look in like 371, for example, we have kind of three different modes. And um, for pure binary data, if people are sending JPEGs as the payload, um, that's going to work kind of differently than EventBridge. Yeah, since we're all JSON all the time, if you were sending JPEG, you'd have to base 60 for it. That, that is an approach we could take. And I just thought that people should take a look at that product because it looks very interesting. Yeah. OK. Um, Unfortunately, I think we're out of time. I was hoping I could get to some of the other PRs to try to resolve them, but I don't want to rush it either. Okay, um, any other, other last-minute comments on this one? We need to make some progress on this, otherwise we're going to rattle forever. Okay, <clears throat> let me just do attendance then, since we're basically out of time. Uh, Ginger, are you there? I am, Doug. Okay, Christian, you there? Hi, Doug. Hello, William? Yep, I'm here. Excellent, cool. Uh, Mohan? Mohan, you there? What about Baran? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Mohan. Fabio. I think, oh, thank you, Fabio. I'm sorry, I completely missed you. Okay. Mohan, one last chance. Okay, is there anybody else I missed? All right, cool. Okay, thank you guys very much. And just a reminder, if you were going to join the SDK call, um, we're not having it today. Um, got canceled. All right, any last minute comments or questions for anybody? Okay, with that, we're out of time. Thank you guys. Good discussion. Cheers. Bye. Bye.